Okay, so Pramod and Rajan are, uh, uh, Rajan is batch of 88, Pramod is one year junior. So I wish I had uh, ragged Pramod when I was in campus, but I didn't. Uh, it's against the law right now, yeah, so that's, that's probably why. Uh, so both of them run this amazing company called Latent View Analytics. It's, I think, one of India's largest and fastest growing analytics firm, right? And uh, founded by Pramod with few others and Rajan has joined them uh, quite recently as their CEO. So talking about analytics, I just can't resist this, right? So there is this, you've heard about the statistician who wanted to cross the river, which was one meter deep on an average, and then he drowned, okay? So these people are here to ensure that we don't look at statistics that way and we look at meaning beyond uh, statistics and what the numbers tell us. Uh, so let me start with you, Pramod. So, what was the trigger for you to start off a company? You were, you were in the corporate world. So what, what happened and why did you uh, start this company? Um, story, I guess, goes back about 13 years ago. We started in 2006. And I'd spent about already a decade in a corporate life. Uh, and I'd worked with mostly large companies. Uh, some of them uh, were multinational corporations as well. Um, and, uh, and I think while some of them, there's a lot to learn, uh, there's always also, you know, that little bit of uh, um, uh, unfulfilled satisfaction, if you could kind of uh, call it that. And, um, and I think the time we went to college, which was in the mid 90s, was, was a great time to be actually graduating because, you know, India was just going through so much, uh, you know, change. We were opening up as an economy, the opportunities were getting immense. Um, I think um, the whole uh, uh, dot-com, I know there was a boom and then there was a bust, but it also showed what was possible, right? Um, there was this whole Indian diaspora, a lot of your classmates who, you know, who were spending time uh, in the U.S. working with young technology companies and so on. So, um, I'd spent some time outside India as well uh, and then, you know, kind of moved back uh, once, uh, you know, I had family and we had young kids. Um, and there was this uh, itch about, hey, what would it be to, you know, kind of uh, do something on your own? Um, and this uh, idea was something that myself and Latent View as a company, there were three of us who started it. Uh, the initial seed idea was myself and uh, the other co-founder who also happens to be my husband. Uh, so, you know, both of us, uh, we'd also met at business school. And, uh, you know, we kind of ask ourselves these questions in terms of, hey, we've had the best of uh, the educational opportunities that India has to offer. Uh, what would it really mean to kind of take the risk a little bit? And if we can't take the risk, who would? So I think that was, in some sense, the seed of uh, the idea of uh, starting uh, Late in View. Um, and, you know, between the two of us, we had fairly complementary skills. I came with a strong, uh, you know, financial background. I come with a very strong execution operations focus. Um, is that because you were messic in Amirabha? No. <laughs> well, uh, I would say it's actually interesting you say that. No, I don't think I held office when I was in uh, bits. But I would uh, my first very entrepreneurial uh, experience, if I could call it that, was in bits. Um, I don't know if anybody even remembers this, you know, little store on campus. It was called the Bits Coop. Uh, it was a cooperative store, uh, and uh, in the very early days, I remember when we joined, it was pretty much like a Russian shop that only the um, staff and their families used to access. So, you know, you'd kind of, I think, get uh, your uh, groceries and your rice and your dal and all of that. And I remember one this of... This is not the shack. Not the uh, shack. Okay. So <laughs> just, just, just check it out. So, so we, so myself and I, and I, and you know a few others, we were actually involved in taking that cooperative store. It used to be sitting somewhere in, um, you know, just opposite Malvia Bhavan, and they kind of said, "Hey, we're willing to allocate a little corner for you guys, right next to the medical center on the way to Connaught." And um, so, you, you, you know, they said, hey, can you make something out of this? Can you actually make this into a full-fledged cooperative store, which will serve as students? That was my first venture because, um, you know, we uh, actually sat and built 
software, we built out an inventory management system. This was the days before barcodes, but we felt super excited. It is, you know, we used to kind of stay up and, you know, write code initially in DBase and then in Fortran and all of that. And then we were actually looking at expanding out uh, all the merchandise that we had, right? So initially it was just, you know, soaps and shampoos and pens and, you know, pencils and all of that. We added Archie's greeting cards. So we felt like super entrepreneurial when we did that. Um, and while that happened, we actually just figured that, um, you know, people were looking for great um, rajais in Pilani because in winter it was tough and all you got was, you know, what was available in Nutan. So I remember, you know, I've done trips to Jaipur to, you know, order these rajais and by the time you bring it to Pilani, boom, within 24 hours they were all gone, right? So we just couldn't keep track of, you know, keep pace with the demand. So. So yeah, uh, talking about uh, bits in experience, I think that was my first venture, so to speak. So um, so yeah, coming back to the latent, latent view story, I think uh, um, we said, hey, we'll take the plunge. And uh, uh, we were then looking for a third co-founder. We looked at a bunch of opportunities and then we kind of zeroed in on data analytics, uh, especially because you know the technology boom has happened. The, we spotted an opportunity and we said we'd plunge. So third co-founder came on board. He came with a very strong technology background. So yeah, so I think that's how the genesis of Latent View um, really happened. Uh, the first few years we spent focused a lot on the India market, but I think after about two to three years, we had our first breaks with some really good customers in the US. And after that, there's been uh, no looking back. Super. And I thought I was, like, I was the only joker who spent 22 years in one company till I realized Rajan here spent 23 years with Accenture. So tell me Rajan, right? So great company, steady job. So what made you switch to this unknown startup? It, it wasn't an unknown startup, definitely. I mean, uh, Pramod and Venkat are, are uh, patchmates from IAM Calcutta as well. So in, in some sense, I knew them and knew about the company. The engagement uh, started happening more in the 2015 time frame, and, and you are right. I mean, I had spent considerable time with uh, Accenture by then. Interestingly, uh, Accenture was like a startup when I joined Accenture in India. We were only about uh, 150 people strong at that time, and when I left Accenture, we were about 175,000 people in India. So it was like a I don't know, what thousandfold. Uh, growth uh, for Accenture did, in India. Did you meet Tiger Woods? No. <laughs> no. We didn't make a lot of jokes about him though. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So, it, it was phenomenal growth there. But uh, with while, while growth brings opportunities, uh, it also uh, uh, brings a certain amount of uh, alienation. Okay. It, it's kind of like uh, hard to imagine that something like that can happen, but uh, it does. Uh, there were days uh, early on in my career in Accenture where uh, everybody knew one another. You know, this is like uh, being on campus, uh, small batch, and you know everybody. Uh, and, and from there we went over the 20-year period to uh, everything becoming reduced to a process or an email ID or a black box. And we're expecting something to get done. You had to send a note and then hope that somebody will take action on it. And if that action doesn't happen, then uh, you have to wait for the SLAs to kick in, and then if uh, the SLAs are violated, then some other SLA comes on top of it. So it's a, it's a bit of a, a challenging cycle that you get into, right, when, uh, uh, when growth happens. That's the flip side of uh, growth. Of course, it brought fantastic opportunities in terms of the types of different things that I could do, uh, even though I was working for the same company uh, in terms of... Uh, the variety of uh, roles that I played. Uh, so for me, uh, the decision to join Latent View Analytics was to re-experience the joys of uh, what I had been through in my initial years at, uh, uh, at uh, Accenture. And in fact, uh, when I first visited the Latent View office in 2015 and I kind of saw the energy, it actually reminded me of being back in campus. Uh, if, if you come to our offices, uh, you, you'll, you'll know what I mean. I mean, the office has been designed entirely by uh, uh, all of our employees. Most of the, uh, the art elements uh, and the decor, right, and, uh, uh, and even the nomenclature for the rooms, uh, it all, uh, it, it's uh, innovative uh, ideas that have sprung from the, from the people on the floor. And it's very much like, uh, like a campus, and, and I was kind of totally taken in by that. 
So is the uh, conference room called Shiv Gangs and stuff like that or? No, I mean, uh. we, we went with, uh, with Oxymoron. So uh, one of the larger rooms we have is called a working vacation. So you get the drift, right? I mean, uh, each room is actually an, uh, an oxymoron. Uh, but even the design elements, right, and, uh, and how the furniture has been put up and all that, it's, it's all completely uh, very, uh, uh, very young and hip, right, so to speak. So in some sense, uh, we are long to be back in those, those days again. So for me, it was a fairly quick uh, decision, right? And of course, uh, if you're yeah. planning to change furniture, you know... Home to I contact. Know to contact. Yeah. Uh, so, but tell me, it's, another thing that was very interesting is I believe you didn't join them straight as a CEO, but you joined them first as a chief people's officer, right? But that's like an HR thing, no? So how did, how did it make sense and why did you do that? Yeah, so I made the switch from a career in strategy and management consulting into HR while at Accenture itself. So after about... Uh, 15 odd years uh, doing work for oil and gas and metals and mining companies. Uh, I had the opportunity to put up my hand for, a, for an operational role inside the company. I mean, when you're a consultant, you are just an advisor. Uh, even if you're in, involved in the implementation of the recommendations and ideas that you're giving, you are still standing on the sidelines in some sense. And then, uh, and then there is somebody else uh, whose uh, neck is on the line, right, in terms of getting things implemented. Uh, the role that I got within Accenture was to head up our talent supply chain uh, for Accenture in India, Accenture Technology. And uh, that was a fairly uh, interesting role because uh, uh, we were actually recruiting about 2,000 people a month. I talked about the growth from 150 to 175,000 people. So that phase was one where we were adding 1,500, 2,000 people a month. The recruitment team was about 300 people so strong. That, yeah. that helped you when that you helped, first yeah. moved as a chief people officer and later Correct, you. Yeah. Hmm? So that, that experience and uh, I, in addition to being the, the talent supply chain lead, I was also the HR analytics lead because we're using data for making as many decisions as possible. So that's, thus began my foray into analytics and HR in a way. So Pramod, tell me, I mean, I asked the same question of Anil as well. What are the challenges, right, when you step out of this uh, a steady job and decide to start something. So without really trying to pontificate, uh, is there any advice, suggestions, learnings that you would like to share with uh, people here? Earlier today after we had a session and a couple of students had come up and you know they were asking this question in terms of, hey, you know, we want to start up, how do we kind of go about it, right? And um, I had this response, and I'm going to kind of use that to answer your question. It's essentially saying, given the amount of focus on starting up, I think we, in recent times, we've tended to idolize and make the whole thing about being an entrepreneur very rock star-like, right? So, uh, in some sense, I think people can make a difference in any career, right? Um, entrepreneurship is just one aspect of, um, you know, being in a career. Um, you, you could make, um, you know, careers as a head of R&D, for instance. You come out with fabulous products. You could make uh, uh, careers as, you, you know, CXOs, for instance. All of those careers take time. And entrepreneurship, being successful as an entrepreneur takes time. So I think all of us who probably spent those, you know, time working in um, the corporate world or by yourself, you do know that careers are marathons, right? So, um, so that's the first preface I would give in terms of, you know, what does entrepreneurship really involve? So it takes a little bit of time to become a unicorn. I must say, um, uh, maybe it does, uh, but unicorns, I guess, are a function of valuation. It's a function of the market, and markets can always go up and they can go down, right? So, uh, but I, I think I, I've spent, uh, uh, I would say, a good part of my life uh, um, prior to latent view, you know, looking, as I said, analyzing companies. I've been a financial analyst. I've spent a lot of time looking at financial statements. I understand balance sheets. I understand P&Ls. And that's where I'm steeped. I'm steeped more on the fundamental analysis uh, kind of things, right? So I would say one thing that I have learned out of that experience is if you build a fundamentally sound business, a lot of other things tend to follow, right? Which is 
for you to build a fundamentally sound business, you need to get your market opportunity right. Right, which is uh, there is an opportunity, there are customers, you need to price right, and you need to be able to then execute well on you know, whatever you have promised you will deliver to the market. Right? After that, the other elements which really help you to scale in terms of talent, um, in terms of scaling and you know, executing operations, and then the third piece around capital. Right? I think all of these really follow if you get that first piece of fundamentally executing well. So I, if there's any advice that I would give for budding entrepreneurs, I would say, you know, focus a lot on that, getting, um, you know, your fundamentals of your business right. Um, and then, you know, capital, all of those are enablers along the way. Would one of the advice also be ensure that your spouse is part of the partnership? <laughs> well, um, I, I know there have been different experiences. You just learn along the way as to, you know, how to manage it. I think there are positives uh, just and there are negatives just as with any other professional relationship. So, right? so what happens if you guys have a disagreement in office, you go back and ruin the dal in the evening or, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I think you learn to deal with that. As I said, we've been doing that now for 13 years. Uh, but, but I think the key thing which probably even working with Rajan as somebody whom, you know, uh, we have a um, relationship as friends even prior to late interview, right? Uh, and now we are colleagues. So I think um, you do learn how to compartmentalize some of these things. Uh, and when you're at work, you're a professional. And when you're outside work, you know, you could just carry on with, uh, you know, doing what you're doing. Super. So Rajan, you've joined the company at a stage when it's no longer can be called a startup, right? So it's like 14, 15 year uh, old company. So what do you see as your big challenge going forward? Uh, yeah, it's an early stage company. I mean, that's what we call ourselves now, no longer a startup. Uh, I think uh, it's really to uh, build on the solid foundation that we have and uh, really launch us into the next orbit because when I came in, I saw the, uh, the potential for what was possible. Uh, you know, here is an organization that's built uh, a set of capabilities that are very, that are very relevant to the market. Uh, it's backed up by the, uh, the marquee list of clients that uh, we were working with and uh, there is immense talent available, right, in terms of uh, what the people can do, not just in terms of the work that's been done in the past, but staying on the cutting edge in terms of the, the dramatic flux that you see right in this space. Uh, this is one area where uh, what you feel is uh, leading edge becomes uh, passe pretty quickly. I mean, because of the forces of commoditization and automation that are always at, at play. So for me, uh, the big challenge is uh, how do we maintain that edge and continue the, the growth trajectory? Right? And how do we actually get onto a even faster growth trajectory. Uh, a lot of the people who have worked in the organization from the early days, they have given a significant amount of their uh, time, heart and soul and, and energy and passion into the company and uh, it's only appropriate that uh, we are able to help them realize their aspirations for the company as well. Uh, this is an industry uh, where uh, churn is high as well. I mean, even higher than what you see in the typical IT, IT space, but there are several people that we have in the firm who have been with us right from the beginning. And uh, in some sense, I see myself as the custodian of all of those uh, interests, passion, and aspirations, and what we can do with it. So that's what uh, is exciting for me personally. Uh, we are on, uh, on a good wicket, definitely, right? I think, uh, like you say, right, I mean, it's, it's up to us to convert this into a pretty big score. Right, and that's what we are setting out. It's a batting pitch, batting pitch right now. Hey, but tell me, you know, I think one of the reasons why this thing was called latent view partnership is that we touched upon one aspect, how easy or difficult is it to work when one of the founders is your spouse? Tell me, how easy is it for you knew each other in bits, one year separated, batchmates in IMCAL, spent all this time together. How easy or difficult it is to translate from friendship into a professional relationship, and does that have any impact on your friendship otherwise? Because I'm sure you will have some disagreements, you will have some uh, debates and, and discussions and, and, and lots of stuff to argue about. So does that in any, so should friends at all get together to form companies or it's something you'd say, no? 
I, I think it's a great idea. I mean, I can't see a why not. Uh, I mean, people talk about friends uh, becoming uh, partners, right, in, in life later on. And that, that's also a, a tricky question, right, that many people navigate. For me personally, I think uh, uh, whether it's friendship or whether it's a business relationship and, and even with clients, all of these are founded on the basis of uh, open, trusting relationship. I think uh, if uh, your historical uh, uh, association and, uh, and, and relationship helps from that perspective, uh, then why not? I mean, I think uh, it allows us to have debates and discussions that are more focused on the logic and data of what we are trying to discuss, as opposed to getting uh, emotionally caught up or you know, getting entangled. I think uh, from that perspective, I think uh, uh, it's, it's an absolutely fine idea to, uh, to work together. Of course, uh, uh, we need to be objective about uh, what is it that we are discussing, and then we need to be uh, uh, taking calls uh, where uh, uh, if, uh, if there is a difference of opinion, right, and, and then we agree to disagree, right, how do we resolve things? And you know, we, need, we need to lay down a framework for those kind of situations. But otherwise, I see it as a fairly positive kind of a model. Yeah. So, okay. Pramod, you don't have a situation where there is a serious discussion and our man says, oh, fuck it, let's just go halu. <laughs> so, so, now how do you handle something like <laughs> that? Yeah. yeah. So... Uh, I would say as a rebound, maybe the only things I would really add is if you've spent enough time to demarcate responsibilities, right? So fairly clear as to, you know, what Rajan looks at, fairly clear as to what I look at. And you, you, both of us are aware uh, that, you know, you're kind of not overstepping um, your lights. And I think those are sense checks we do you, you know, fairly often to kind of say, hey, is this, is this fine? And then there's lots of communication about if we have overstepped as well, the other person's always kept in the loop, right? So, so that whole aspect of, uh, you know, trust and so on gets reinforced because you have all these opportunities to reinforce that trust. So I think that's the first and most important piece of every opportunity you have to reinforce trust probably just makes that bond a little stronger. Um, on the aspect of how do you kind of retain the friendship and how do you allow how do you not allow the professional piece to not overtake the friendship that's a slightly harder one because uh, your interactions then to be a, uh, tend to be a lot more professional uh, and uh, how do you then ensure that the lightness in your relationship continues to stay I think that's something we probably are still working at. I don't think we've kind of uh, cracked that one uh, yet. But I would say as an individual, those are probably the times your maturity is tested the most. Because you then want to become a better individual to kind of then say, hey, you, you, if I kind of roll back, this person is, is a friend first, right? So, so long as you kind of then, uh, you, you know, kind of figure out that you want to invest in that as well beyond just the professional piece. Uh, well, thank you. I think that's a very, very frank and honest answer. Uh, thank you so much, um, Rajan and uh, Pramad, and wish you all the very best uh, for your company. May you become a unicorn or, or an even bigger mythical animal uh, very quickly. Uh, any, so we have maybe a few minutes left. Uh, any questions from the audience? Uh, Anandki, uh, LJ? Oh, it does? Uh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, here's the mic. And I think it's coming from a very appropriate person because he runs a company which has also got three Bitsians uh, as part of it, right? Oh, now I can, yeah. No, no, this is a question for uh, Professor uh, G.K. Suresh uh, because, uh, you know, we wanted to ask him this question during the last… Uh, uh, so, uh, Professor Suresh, uh, 
<laughs> yes. Question to me? Yes, yes. No, no. So you, 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 can't, uh, you can't pose so a question you, to me. Is it, is it true that you actually work at this place? It's a BS College of uh, Management? <laughs> what? No, no. You I said th- you'd move to… I, I think it's getting frivolous. Now the questions need to be addressed to the uh, erudite <laughs> panel members and not but to the… But how did you move from uh, like uh, no, no, selling no, cigarettes yeah, yeah, to yeah, got it, got uh, it. education? Can we take it offline? I mean, <laughs> we've, we've got… The evening is young and… Anything I've always to wanted to ask uh, most people who start this journey, especially those that uh, have given up a very comfortable, cushy, uh, rewarding careers and then moved on to the startup world and running up businesses on their own. What is your exit strategy? Exit strategy. Um, I guess when you start on this journey, you. If you start with exit in your mind, then you're constantly searching for the exit. Uh, I don't think we started on this journey with exit on the mind. So uh, I think at any point on the journey, if you do want to get off, I think there are train stations which are waiting for you. But um, uh, I think at this point, we've been kind of really focusing on ensuring how do you make this train, you know, continue to grow, continue to sustain and so on. But yes, I think that's something we need to kind of look at because we do have um, a lot of our, uh, you know, employees who've been invested in a business for a fairly long time. Uh, and, um, you know, obviously aspirations that they have along the way are things that we need to look at. Um, but um, no, at this point, I, we haven't built the business focusing on an exit in mind. And, and, and they've been at it for 14 years, right? They started in 2006. So... 